Hey everybody, Dr. Powers. We're going to work a little bit more with linear regression here. We're going to uh, look at, uh, take a look at the residuals. So in a previous video, I found the residuals. As you may remember, the residual is a difference between what the actual y value is and what is predicted from the linear regression equation based on the sample data. Uh, so what we're going to do is get the uh, pre put the predicted uh, median listing price I'm going to generate that again and that is going to be <clears throat> the intercept I'm going to pull that up right from right here plus the slope times the median uh, square feet which is found for this one in cell f2 so I'm going to fix the rows to 15 okay I'm going to copy this down. I'm not going to bother fixing the columns to K and J respectively with the dollar signs because I'm only copying this formula down. So I'm going to get the predicted median listing price for each county, copy that down, and I'm going to now find the error, also known as the residual. The residual is defined as the actual observed. That's going to be found in column D because I'm going to subtract column G. Uh, two and that's going that difference is my residual Okay, now all of this is just to get me a bunch of residuals What I want to do here is I'm going to show you how to get a residual plot Residual plot is a plot where the uh, I guess there's a couple different ways the main the main thing is that the X that the the the, the Y coordinate of the points are the residual values typically what we do is we're going to have the um, the median or the the x val the x variable be the horizontal variable and uh, and have the the residuals be the y so I'm going to pull that I'm going to select those and I'm going to go up to insert and I'm going to insert a scatter plot now this is a residual this is my residual plot I'm going to title it as such. Uh, now the axes are very funny. I'm going to change this horizontal axis. I'm going to format this axis so it, I don't need it to go that far. I'm going to have it go from, say, um, the lowest house price. Let's do 1250, and the upper bound on this is going to be, well, that, I'll just go up to 3,000. Oh, this is this is square footage. Sorry. And actually, I don't like to have the axis up there. I'm going to, that's a good place. I'm going to have to go to edit this vertical axis, format this, and tell where the horizontal axis crosses. And I'm going to have it cross at the uh, at negative 200,000. That'll put that, yeah, that looks much better. I like to have the, the axis not in the way. So this is my residual plot. What do you do with the residual plot? It, the residual plot is telling you what it, like it's giving you a sense of uh, what the error of the regression is for any given value of x. If one of the assumptions of linear regression is that the residual, uh, the 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 mean of the residuals is zero, that's no problem because that's going to happen auto automatically, but also that there's no um, uh, change in the variation of residuals dependent on x. That's called, that's called uh, homoscedasticity. The uh, homoscedasticity is one of the assumptions, same, same variation, same randomness. And uh, you wanted to see if the variation seems to be about the same. Now there's a couple points that are far from the rest. You can see there's one point that's pretty high up, this residual. This means there was one, uh, one county where my, my model severely underestimated the median listing price. And there's also another, which is, uh, it's the, the residual is very close to zero, but it is, um, it's only eight hundred twenty-nine dollars off, but the the square footage is very far off from the rest of them. Well, that's not a big deal. It's that that doesn't that isn't going to 
cause us any problems. There's this one outlier, I don't know. I mean, it's with a data set this small, it's hard to say whether there's much of a pattern to the residuals. Um, I don't think there's anything that looks really problematic here. Uh, what you should see, it, I would say that it seems to be a little bit skewed to the to the to the upper values, though. You can see that with zero here, um, that the the spread below zero isn't as much as the spread above zero. That is an indication that there is. Uh, it's a little bit the the distribution of residuals is a little bit skewed. So. Um, that's that's something that you might want to observe. The other thing that we can look at is a histogram of residuals to see if they looks like a looks like a, a a bell curve kind of a shape. To take a look at that, I'm going to uh, just select those residuals again, um, and let's actually just select the the title look of that column as well, and insert a, another chart. There's <clears throat> One of the charts that's built in is uh, there are, let's see, statistics chart. There's a, I can make a histogram. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of histograms in Excel, but uh, this is a histogram. I'll put it over here. Um, this is my uh, histogram of residuals. Uh, it's, it's put this into uh, five bars. One of the bars is actually empty. There's no residuals that were within that uh, range of 242,000 to 902, or sorry, 242,000 to 372,000. So if you if you wanted to have a different number of bins, you have to select the x-axis and uh, click on Format Axis. That's going to give you some choices of uh, how to set the bins. You can set the number of bins to be five, six, uh, let's see. We could do it, we could do seven bins if we wanted to. It's going to automatically set the um, the size of each of the bins and, the, and everything. Actually, I, I think that five uh, bins is probably fine. Uh, funny enough that it, it changed the height of one of the bars when I did that. But that's okay. So what we're seeing is, as I said, the residuals are very skewed. So this is a little bit problematic. Um, in linear regression, you should have a symmetric distribution of residuals, but this is a skewed distribution. So let's put that. Let's put that over here, and uh, let's talk a little bit about something else, um, which is how, uh, the cor correlation. Correlation. Uh, coefficient. The correlation coefficient between the two variables tells you how strong of a linear relationship there is between them. And the function for that is the C-O-R-R-E-L function in Excel. This is going to give us a number from negative one to one that measures how strong of a linear relationship there is. I'm going to put in the, uh, the, the, the first array of median listing price and then the second array of the median square feet. This is going to give me a number, 2.275028. This is what you would call a weak relationship. Uh, if it was, you can you can look at the different different textbooks have different um, kind of rules of thumb about what makes it strong or weak. But I will say that 0 0.27 is 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 considered to be weak. If it was upper up in around 0.75 or higher, that would probably be considered a strong by most standards. Um, but one thing that is clear is that this is a positive relationship. That means as one variable tends to increase, the other one tends to increase as well. For higher values of square footage, you tend to see higher median listing prices. And you can sell that, of course, because the correlation is a positive number. The Another statistic that's useful is the coefficient of determination. And this is also called R squared. I don't have a little uh, square. I'm going to just use a little caret. Um, the correlation coefficient is also called R. Correlation coefficient, R. Uh, R squared can be found easily by just squaring the correlation. Uh, I can 
just take uh, the, well, I'm, right, since I have correlation in this other cell, I'll just take the value in this cell and I'll use the caret and two to square that number. The correlation, uh, the coefficient of determination is a way of, uh, of quantifying how much of the variation of the y variable is explained by the variation of the x variable. So as far as median listing price goes, the median square footage for this for the county can explain about 7.56, 7 7.6% of that variation. So square footage is a, a factor in the, the listing price, but it's not certainly not the only factor. There are other factors that go to explain how come there's so much variation in uh, listing prices. Well, Square footage can account for about 7.5% of that variation. That's what the coefficient of determination tells you. Uh, and as, as uh, I mentioned before, when you, do, when you use the uh, data analysis under, we've done this before, but under data, if you use data analysis and you do a regression, you get this output. And this is going to tell you the R squared here and the, the multiple R, which is the correlation. One thing to be aware of though is multiple R is going to be positive number regardless of the direction. And so you can always, just for a simple linear regression, you can just check and see whether the coefficient of the, like the slope coefficient is positive or negative. That's gonna tell you whether the, uh, the, the R is, <laughs> is a positive or negative. Um, yeah, so there we go. That that takes a look at both of these things. Um, okay, anyway, that's all I want to cover right now. <laughs> Bye.